Today on the Rebelcast, we'll be talking about Isaac Newton, a scientist in the light and a wizard in the dark. He believed that he can attain Christ's abilities through a Jewish mystical study called the Kabbalah. He also claimed that he can turn metal into gold. Newton wanted to rebuild Solomon's temple for many different reasons, like his relation to secret societies, which we will reveal through his own writings. My name is Hassan Ismail, and you are listening to episode 6 of The Rebelcast. Before we start, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, and activate notifications. Thank you. Thanks so much, everybody, for joining the podcast. So today we'll be talking about a topic which we already discussed before in episode 4, which is the relation between science and magic. Today's case is different. We'll be talking about a genius that you are aware of. His name is Isaac Newton. Born on January 4, 1643 in Lincolnshire, England, Newton was the only son of a prosperous farmer who died three months before Newton was born. As we know, Newton is a priest, a physicist, a mathematician, an inventor, a philosopher. But what most of us is not aware of is that Newton was an alchemist. Surely you might say that such sharp logical mind would disregard religious and magical studies. Yet, his curiosity led him to study any avenue to discover the truth. The truth about this world, the wonders of this universe we live in. That is what took Newton's interest. As the economist John Maynard Keynes, who acquired many of Newton's writings on alchemy, stated that Newton was not the first of the age of reason. He was the last of the magicians. Now you're asking why would an economist like John Keynes call Newton as a magician, not a philosopher or a physicist or a mathematician or even a priest? Why did he say a magician? That is why we're doing this podcast today to uncover Newton the magician. Newton wrote about alchemy more than science and math combined together. He believed that religion and science are inseparable. His main goal was to acquire the Philosopher's Stone, which he wrote its recipe in one of his writings. He was inspired by the chemist Robert Boyle, which also was an alchemist. Now these two great minds, Newton and Boyle, studying alchemy made me think that modern science should reconsider studying this type of science which is called alchemy. Alchemy is the study of transmuting matter from a lower state to a more perfect state. But it's not just about matter, alchemy is also about the spiritual type of the self. So it transmutes the metal spirit of the self to a golden spirit of the self. And that is what Newton was studying, that is what Newton was doing. And that is what Newton believed all of his inventions came from. He believed that God created this word as a machine. Yet, the divinity of God was kept inside of this machine for us to stay in contact with him. Such a beautiful mind Newton had to think that we are in some kind of a simulation which today in the 21st century we are theorizing about. Today, people think that we are in some kind of computer simulation. But guess what? Newton prophesied that in the 17th century. He collected a lot of Bibles from different languages. French, Arabic, Hebrew, Aramaic, Latin, just to uncover the truth. Because he believed the truth does not only concentrate in one realm. It's not only in science, unlike many other scientists today, they believe, no, the truth lies in science, in physics. But no, Newton did not believe that, which I do agree with Newton about that. I do agree that there's a truth inside every realm we need to study. Yet, today's science, if you tell them alchemy, It's like saying Satan inside of a church or a mosque. Also, Newton was obsessed with the architecture, the ancient architecture. He believed that the ancient monuments that were built by the ancient times, like ancient uh, Pharaoh, ancient Egypt, 
and uh, Solomon's temple had some kind of deep knowledge inside of them. He dedicated a lot of his life just drawing the architecture plan of Solomon's temple. He was obsessed in it, in details, how many doors, how many stairs, how many floors, how many windows, everything in details, getting all of his information from the Bibles, from ancient histories, for many, many years. And now you're saying, why would Newton be obsessed in such temple? I read an article in the Jerusalem Post. It's been written that, to Newton, the temple held significance for three main reasons. First, Newton saw the Jewish temple as a model of the universe. He believed that the temple in Jerusalem and the courtyard surrounding it was a model of the heliocentric solar system, with the raised altar representing the sun. Second, Newton's interest in the architecture of the temple was fueled by his belief that the temple would serve as a site of revelation for the apocalypse. In addition, he believed that the temple would be rebuilt in Jerusalem with even greater magnificence than the original at the onset of the millennial kingdom that is Christ's reign on earth. Hey, I just wanted to give you a small hint over here that in Islamic eschatology, the Jewish temple is believed to be the preparing for the coming of the Antichrist, not the Christ. Would that mean Newton was a Zionist since 17th century? Hmm. So Newton believed that the Solomon's temple has some kind of a reflection to the heavens, to the sky. He believed that it was some kind of projection of the sun, of the moon, of the solar system, that its plan, its architectural plan was built in accordance to its the locations of the celestial bodies in the sky. Same as the pyramids, as we know, they are aligned with the Orion's belt. And he was fascinated by such knowledge that how could ancient do that back then? And he was trying to rebuild this monument, this temple. Now, out of my own studies in secret societies, I know that back then in the 17th century there was a secret society called the Rosicrucianism, the Rosicrucians. They studied the same studies that Newton was studying, which made me think that Newton would have part of that secret society. They studied uh, the Solomon's Temple, they studied Hermeticism, which believed the same as Newton said. This projection of heavens to earth, as above so below, comes from the Hermetic teachings, which Newton was studying, which also the Rosicrucians studied. He also studied the Kabbalah, which is a mystical Jewish study. Now, for those of you who do not know the Rosicrucians, the Rosicrucian is a mystery school. They teach uh, many mystical religious studies like uh, the Kabbalah, the Gnosticism, ancient, Egypt, ancient Egyptian uh, studies, um, Greek mythologies, and many other religious studies. And Newton studied the same exact studies as the Rosicrucians, which made me think that Newton might be having part of this Rosicrucian society which was banned back then because it had a lot of ideas outside of the mainstream Orthodox Christian religion like the Trinity let's say they didn't believe in the Trinity even Newton did not believe the Trinity of Jesus Newton believed that Jesus is like any human being and anybody can reach what the Christ reached by making the vessel, the, this body we have, 
as a temple, as the studies of Kabbalah say, and hiring its state, its alchemical state, through virtues and righteousness. That is what Newton believed. So he did not believe that Christ is divine and this kind of divinity is only connected to him. He believed anybody can reach what Jesus reached, which was rejected by the Orthodox religion, Orthodox Christian religion. And that is why he kept it as a secret. He didn't want to publicize this kind of information. It was found later on in his writings. And it's also connected to the Rosicrucianism because Rosicrucians believe the same. I delved more into the rabbit hole. I read what John Maynard Keynes, the economist, found through Newton's writings. And what John Keynes said about Newton is, Newton was not the first of the age of reason. He was the last of the magicians, the last of the Babylonians and the Sumerians, the last great mind which looked out on the visible and intellectual world with the same eyes as those who began to build our intellectual inheritance rather less than 10,000 years ago. He said that Newton was a magician just like the Sumerians and the Babylonians. We know that back then in the time of the Babylonians and Sumerians magic was something practiced and was something respected to do. Not anybody would be able to do that. Magic was like science today back then. And he believed Newton was the same as those Babylonians and Sumerians looked from the same eyes as those ancient people. Moreover, why do I call him a magician? He said, because he looked on the whole universe and all that is in it as a riddle, as a secret which could be read by applying pure thought to certain evidence certain mystic clues which God had laid about the world to allow a sort of philosopher's treasure hunt to the exoteric brotherhood. He mentioned brotherhood, which leads us to the Rosicrucianism, which means that Newton was indulged in societies and brotherhood, and he was trying to reach some type of a certain level in his teachings. He was trying to reach some kind of knowledge to hire his degrees inside of his brotherhood that he was indulged in. That is still a speculation till now. It's not certain that it's a Rosicrucianism. It might be a different one. But I believe that he was part of a secret esoteric brotherhood. Also, I want to add over here that I found the Rosicrucian Manifesto among his books. He might be curious to read about them, but still, he studied everything that they used to study. He regarded the universe as a cryptogram set by the Almighty, just as himself wrapped the discovery of the calculus in a cryptogram when he communicated with Labans. By pure thought, by concentration of mind, the riddle he believed would be revealed to the initiate. This type of thinking is totally like the Rosicrucians. They think the same way in terms of cryptics. To reach a certain level inside of their brotherhood, you need to uncover the secrets, the wonders of this world, which is something good, yet nobody knows for what this kind of knowledge will be dedicated for. Is it good or bad? Moreover, and when the turn of his life came and he put his books of magic back into the box, it was easy for him to drop the 17th century behind him and to evolve into the 18th century figure, which is the traditional Newton. He didn't publicize himself as a sorcerer, as a wizard, as a mystery person. He publicized himself as the physicist, the philosopher, the genius, 
and he kept aside in the darkness his exoteric magic box. As one broods over these queer collections, it seems easier to understand with an understanding which is not, I hope, distorted in the other direction. This strange spirit who was tempted by the devil to believe at the time when within these walls he was solving so much that he could reach all the secrets of God and nature by the pure power of mind, Copernicus and Faustus in one. As we know back then in the times, it's, it was anybody that goes beyond what religions say is considered some kind of a devil work. And was, what Newton was trying to do is to learn more about the secrets of this world we live in. Yet, he didn't want to publicize himself being indulged in secret societies that oppose the mainstream orthodox religions that he used to follow before. So what the economist John Cain said about him that he was tempted by the devil as a meaning that tempted to learn how God think is something evil and we should not delve through. Back then, in the uh, in the 17th century, whoever tries to know how God do things is something bad. You don't have to know how God did it, you just be inside of it. <laughs> but Newton was trying to be, to play the role of the person who wants to understand the wonders, not just the person who wants to experience. That is a true genius. It's a huge big mystery to delve through. Newton is not just a physicist. Newton is not just a philosopher. Newton is not just a mathematician or even a priest. Newton was a sorcerer of his time. Now, if you go and tell anybody in the realm of science, physics, or whatever. Newton is a sorcerer. And there's proofs about that. It's the same as going to the mosque and saying Satan. <laughs> they will all be scared about it. Don't do that. Don't say that. Even Newton uh, used to believe in ether. Ether which is a spiritual type of field that light moves through that was believed before modern science modern physics came and he believed that spirits were the source of the forces that allow the celestials the motion of the bodies to go through Un unlike today it's called force just force but modern physics came and it cancelled everything that has some type of spiritual sense and said no ether does not exist what exists is vacuum and light moves through vacuum yet it was proven wrong light does not move through vacuum light needs a field called ether that was proved later on when we, when it was disapproved then later on it was proved again that ether exists and light needs ether to move through that field the same as the water waves need water to move the sound waves need air particles to move through the light waves need ether to move through which is something we do not see by our eyes that is why modern science said it does not exist but in alchemical terms, it does exist. This needs to be reconsidered. The alchemists were the genius of their times. Yet, today, everybody that practices magic or alchemy is considered a devil worshipper. I'm not saying that there's no bad side of alchemy. There is. As we saw in episode 4, we talked about Jack Parsons. A totally opposite human from Newton. 
Jack Parsons used to do black magic. He did sex magic. He did uh, invocations of devils. He did invocations of Babylon. He did invocations of uh, the Antichrist. He embodied the Antichrist. Unlike Newton, was a very, very uh, spiritual person in the good manner. So, what out of my study in secret societies, they either take the right path or the left path. From what I see, Jack Parsons in episode 4 we talked about took the left path, which is the dark path, the path of black magic and ego and all of that to study his occult sciences through that experience. He did sex magic, he did uh, devil worship and all that. Yet, Newton took the right path, which is the right of virtue, righteousness and all that. I also read that in one of his writings that were found, he was writing repentance to God from many simple things. He was repenting because he, uh, he wanted to burn his stepfather. <laughs> so he wrote a repentance to God. God, um, please forgive me about saying that. He was repenting all the time. He was such a very spiritual human. He didn't even have sex in his life. He didn't have any sexual relation. That shows you how pure that person is. He kept his knowledge very, very, very secret all of this time. And I put the pictures of uh, the writings to see here. And I put all the sources of all information in the description box for you to go and read and discover by yourself. All of that been said. Saying that Newton is a magician is not like saying, oh, means Newton can make things fly by his own hands, like from a distance. Not like that. Magic is something that involves the sur surrounding. Something that involves the spirit in relation with the surrounding. To be the magician as a Newton, the magician, you need to have this type of virtues and patience and will and those type of values which enables you to connect to the God, the godly power. And this godly power will give you access to knowledge. This access of knowledge, once acquired through these type of occultic mystery magic studies, allows Newton to build or be inspired to do his inventions. That is what I mean by magic. Of course, a lot of scientists and people who are delved in sciences would not believe that. What if I tell you I studied physics for four years in my life and I do believe in what Newton did because I experienced many of what Newton had experienced. This type of access of knowledge, access of experiences through virtues, through rituals, I've experienced by my own life. This mystical sense of being, I have experienced. And I had this type of uh, physics mind. I, I used to study physics, I delved into uh, his equations, calculus. Even calculus has magic inside of it. Anybody who studies physics or math knows that calculus has magic inside of its numbers. Manipulation of numbers. How Newton brought calculus to life is 
through manipulation of numbers. And that manipulation in itself is magic. The same as when somebody manipulates matter in alchemy and turns something from metal into gold. People will be, whoa, this is magic. What if I tell you Rosicrucians and Newton were able to turn metal into gold? Yet they were banned because some people did it and lied to people. They didn't actually do it. Some people. They lied to people that this is real gold and it wasn't real gold. But Newton had the recipe for it and was able to turn it. But who would approve of such invention, turning metal into gold? It would ruin the economy. Everybody would be having gold. You know what I mean? Everybody will be able to do gold by themselves if Newton was able to publicize such teachings. So nobody would allow alchemy to go outside to the public. And they would demonize alchemy. And people would say magic does not exist. Because we are only focused on matter not the spiritual realm we are living. What if I tell you Newton did his inventions out of his alchemy, out of his rituals? It's not me that did it, it's Newton. <laughs> you don't have to believe me. It's Newton, the genius, Al Isaac Newton. It's not me. <laughs> Though I have many other personal stories that I would talk about in other podcasts. It's at the end up to you. But I believe some people are not ready to this type of knowledge. Some people are not qualified for this type of knowledge. Because this type of knowledge for some is dangerous. Newton lived a very solitary life. He was alone. Most of his life he was in solitude. He didn't want anybody to be with him. And that is um, a property of a mystic. Solitude. We'll do more study and research on this topic. But I hope you grasped the idea of what magic is and what alchemy is and how Newton is a magician. I hope you have a very safe and healthy life and enjoy this magical world we live in with all of its wonders. My name is Hassan and you are listening to the Rebelcast.